Good morning and welcome to another edition of 100 Days of Devotion. This morning, just before we get into the Word of God, please pray with me for a minute. Dear Father, thank you for the privilege that we have to come before you with our petition, to come before you boldly, to obtain grace and mercy in time of need. Thank you for the privilege that we have to beseech your throne and your face. Lord, that you come to respond to us promptly. Thank you for your goodness and mercies that pursue us daily. Thank you for your joy that is activated in us with each new morning. Lord, we are so grateful that every time we pray, we see an answer. Thank you, Lord, because this morning, even as we study your word, I pray that there will be such a deep and profound activation in our spirits that we will never be the same again. Thank you, Lord, because by prayer, we obtain great results and we cause our King to be known in the earth and to have rule and dominion over all things. Lord, I pray that you grant me utterance to bring your word to your children this morning. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This morning, I'll be teaching on the part two of the teaching I taught yesterday, Effective Prayer. So, this is Effective Prayer, part two. And yesterday, we defined prayer as the exchange of intimate thoughts, feelings, and words with God in which we know, we declare, we enforce, and establish His will on earth as it is in heaven. We also said that the ultimate purpose of prayer is thy kingdom come. And by kingdom come, when the Bible says thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in that context, that kingdom come means that the king is known and the king has reign and dominion over all things. So the ultimate purpose of prayer is that our king will be known and have dominion over all circumstances. That is why we pray. We are praying to establish God's agenda on earth as it is in heaven. Remember in Genesis when the Bible says, the Lord God had spoken forth all of the shrubs and the trees, but none of them had shown, had sprung up because there was no man to work the earth. There was no man to bring it forth through words. That is the same picture of prayer. There are things that God has already spoken in the realm of the spirit. And God is looking for a man that will say the same thing in agreement. God has already given the earth to man. God has given the authority and dominion of earth to man. So therefore, for God's will to be established in the earth realm, God wants to partner with men as co-creators with him. God wants to partner with men as those who have been given dominion over the earth that we will find his will. We will discover him and we will make him known and through our prayers, give him expression and the full dominion over all things. When we pray, our heavenly father has dominion and is known in every circumstance. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, pray without ceasing. And so yesterday, I gave you six qualities of effective prayer. I said, number one, effective prayer is intentional. It is heartfelt. Number two. Number three, it is consistent. Number four, it needs or requires separation. Number five, it is continuous. And number six, it is word-based. Today, I'm going to give you a few other qualities. Number seven, effective prayer is fervent. It's fervent. It is passionate. Look, it is usually a display of passionate intensity. There's an intensity factor when it comes to prayer. Because when you start to put your heart in prayer and your prayer is word-based and continuous, one of the things that will happen is that it will create passion from within you. And passion or favor means it doesn't just carry our emotions, but it carries our deep thoughts, our intentions. It carries the flame of the spirit that is in us. So effective prayer will come from a place of fervor. It is fervent, but it will also set us aglow. When your prayer is effective, you would realize that the first effect of your prayer is that you are set aglow. It builds a fire in you. This is different from the quality of prayer being heartfelt in that it is usually an intentional curation of thoughts and feelings. 
So in this point, we're not just talking about the feelings that you have, bringing them in prayer. At this point, like the story of Anna, she brought her feelings in prayer. But fervent prayer means that the word of God gives us that which we feel. The word of God builds a flame in us. Romans chapter 12, I'll be reading the verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, do not lack diligence. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. He says, be persistent in prayer. Be fervent in spirit. Be a glow at all times. Effective prayer comes from a place of fire but would also set you aglow. Number eight, effective prayer demands purity. It requires purity. If you want to see answers to your prayer, you have to learn to pray from a place of purity. You see, I tell you, no matter how you live your life, when you pray, the mercy of God will cause God to attune his ears to you and to listen to you. In the mercy of God, many prayers are answered. It is the mercy of God that causes the prayer of sinners to be answered. But you see, when we come to maturity, when we have given our hearts to the Lord and we are born again, we are bona fide children of the Lord, He requires purity. Purity of our flesh, purity of our hearts. You have to live right. You have to live in accordance with the righteousness of God that was imputed in your spirit. Remember, when you gave your life to Christ, you are no longer a sinner. You have become righteous by grace, as the Bible says. And now, as a righteous one, you are made righteous so that you can live righteous. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Listen, the prayer of a righteous person. So prayer does two things. Prayer will produce purity, but it also requires purity. So that is the beauty that as I come to the Lord, every impurity in me disappears, is washed away. But also as I am brought to this new place of purity, it is so that I can pray more effectively. He says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Men who pray effective prayer, women who pray effective prayer, they walk in sexual purity, in purity of the mind. They are separated from all kinds of perversions. You know why? Because effective prayer requires purity. You see, the priests were required to walk in purity in the Old Testament. And God has given us priesthood, especially for those who pray intercessory prayers. When you're praying for others, when you're praying for nations, remember, bring your heart before the Lord in all purity. If you're struggling with purity, I told you, prayer will also produce purity so that you can pray more effectively. Number nine, effective prayer thrives in community. When there are more people, prayer becomes effective. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Especially when we are praying for geographical territories, for nations, when we are praying intercessory prayers, I tell you the truth, Effective prayer will thrive in a community. This is why you cannot miss church. This is why you cannot stay away from the gathering of people. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, the Bible says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exalting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. He says in verse 25, don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. Don't forsake the gathering. If you're listening to this and you struggle with church attendance, I tell you right now, you will struggle in your prayer life. I've seen people who did not know how to pray. I've seen people who did not even have a culture of prayer. 
but at some point in their lives they began to attend the community or they became part of an effective community the first thing that happened is when you become part of a community spiritual fervor you are set aglow when you become part of a community you grow in purity when you watch other young people or other people like yourself who are challenging you because they are trying to live for christ it will challenge you and of course what will happen is when you pray in community you will learn to pray you will have a vocabulary in prayer sometimes as a pastor we are praying in church i'm intentional about my prayer because i know that through my prayer many people are learning how to pray my children know how to pray because they listen to their father pray Prayer will thrive in community. The Bible continually teaches about the power of praying as a community. One person's prayer life can stir you up to pray. You might not like prayer, but you watch another person pray and pray and it stirs you up. You know, that's one thing that happens even in a marriage. Some seasons, my wife is so fervent in prayer, there's no way I can go and be slack. It stirs me up to pray. Number 10, effective prayer can be activated you see sometimes you hear people say things like i don't know how to pray i don't know how to pray effectively prayer bores me let me tell you if you're following all the points you would realize that we are building up something if you follow up all these points from number one right down to number 10 you already know that effective prayer can be activated certain factors can make you want to pray for example the kind of music you listen to i have believers tell me oh you know listening to worldly music is not a sin who said it was a sin who said so but i tell you it will pollute your spirit there are certain kinds of songs you listen to that will pollute your spirit it will cause you not to pray it will distract you the kind of messages or words you're listening to the people you give your attention to the atmosphere you create or entertain, the kind of places or environments where you stay, the things that you read, these are all things that can activate a prayer life. They can stir you up to pray or they can destroy your prayer life. So you have to be watchful. Effective prayer can be activated. This morning is an activation for you. And I'm praying that even as you listen to this message, you'll be stirred up to pray. That you won't just go and sit back and be laid back, but that this message will cause you to want to pray to bring your words to the Father, to pray. Look, if you're not yet praying, you can start. You can set a 15-minute alarm every day. I'm going to start praying 15 minutes every day from 6 a.m. to 6.15. I tell you, if you start doing that consistently, at some point you find out you prayed for 30 minutes. And remember, I told you, number one, effective prayer is intentional so what you can basically do is you actually plan the prayer topics sometimes when i want to pray when i'm on my retreat and i really want to pray i will write down all the things i want to pray for all the things i want to pray for and remember point six i said effective prayer is word based so when i write down all the things i want to pray for the next thing i go and do is i will find portions of scripture that speak about that thing i want to pray for so that when i'm praying i'm praying the word of god number 11 effective prayer is driven by compassion your prayers cannot be effective without compassion compassion is a deep feeling of love for someone that causes you to do something for them usually you start praying and you're drawn to tears this kind of prayer is very effective in the working of miracles it is very effective in the working of miracles i tell you in mark chapter 1 verse 41 the bible says moved with compassion jesus reached out and touched him i am willing he said be healed jesus was moved with compassion when he saw people in distress he was moved with compassion when he saw lazarus in the tomb and his sisters were crying he was moved with compassion to the point of tears then he said lazarus come out you see when there's compassion and love in your heart your prayers become effective when God is able to touch your heart with the sorrows of men, when you can see people suffering, you will intercede for them. When you see unbelievers, you know that these are people that will be destroyed. They will go to hell if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. It moves you to compassion. Just last night, I was out, you know, preaching and doing street evangelism. I met a lady and as I preached to her, you know, at some point she told me that she was owing her house rent and she was confused. 
and I wasn't planning to. But when I finished preaching to her, she gave her life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit moved me. I just told her, give me your account details and I paid her rent for one month. Trust me, that was a big sacrifice. But I decided to obey the Lord. You know why? Because the compassion in my heart caused me to hear the Lord. The Lord said, do it. I just obeyed instantly. Let me tell you something. God will move you to do things for people when you are full of compassion. When Jesus saw the man that had leprosy, the Bible says, moved with compassion. Jesus touched him and then he said, go and show yourself to the priest. I've taught you about this before. In the Old Testament, when you had leprosy and you were coming to a group where there were people, you had to shout from a distance, lepros, lepros, so that people will avoid you and have no physical contact with you. But when our Lord Jesus saw the man with leprosy, the Bible says Jesus touched him. By compassion, Jesus did not only heal his flesh, Jesus healed his soul. If you're going to be a worker of miracles, you have to let the compassion of God fill your heart. Number 12, effective prayer is guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prayer and he is the one who leads us in prayer. It is he who will make a true life of prayer. He will give us a true spirit or attitude of prayer. You cannot pray effectively without the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. He says, Pray in the Spirit with all manner of supplication. Pray in the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. In Jude chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says, But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you to pray. The Bible says, For we know not what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us through groanings that cannot be uttered in words. Oh, that's why we pray in tongues. I'm going to teach you about that. Because praying in tongues is actually the Lord praying through you, his perfect will. Number 13, effective prayer is full of authority. I've taught you what authority means. I told you authority means to cause people or places or things to prosper by your decrees. You know that you have authority over something because of how you can speak to that thing and because of how your words will cause that thing to prosper. That is the main difference between authority and control. In control, I want to prosper. With authority, I want you to prosper. And many elders or leaders or parents must be very careful because most times we think we are exercising authority, but we are actually exercising control. We are forcing children to do things they have no business doing because of our own reputation and not because we really want them to prosper. And that's the spirit of prayer. Look, in prayer, it is full of authority because prayer is causing God's will to prosper upon the earth. Prayer is about the people we are praying for. Prayer is never about ourselves. The reason why we can pray and see the answer of God in our own lives is because God's will must equally prosper in our lives. God already wants you to prosper. He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. The basis of your authority in prayer is your position in Jesus. In Christ, you have the authority. The practice of your authority is in your listening to the Spirit's voice and praying out with faith what the Spirit says to you. That's how I have authority. We pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, All power, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. He sent us with authority. We can pray for His will because we are aligned with Him. Number 14, effective prayer is faith-driven. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. You cannot see effective prayer or have answers to prayer without faith. Mark chapter 11 verse 23, the Bible says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Effective prayer is faith-driven. 
I can pray because I know that there is a God, that he is, he does, and he has done. That's why I can pray. And lastly, number 15, effective prayer produces results. It produces results. 1 John chapter 5, verse 15 says, And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If you know that he hears you when you pray, the only condition for results to be produced is that you know that he hears you when you pray. Look, when you're praying, you can tell when you have received an answer. Whenever I pray, I know I have an answer because I know God heard me. If you're doubting if God heard you, maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need the word. Maybe you need knowledge or teaching. But this morning I pray for you that your prayers will be effective. Your prayers will produce results. I pray for you that your prayer will be alive to God and will produce results of God's will being established on earth, of our King being known and having the reign in earth. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I pray that by the consciousness of our sonship, we will establish our Father's will on earth as it is in heaven. Our prayer will cause the kingdom to come, our King to be known, and our King to reign. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. It was beautiful having you on today's meditation. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye.